Hey, this video is a quick guide to Warhammer 40k, its lore, and armies. So we'll start with quickly running through the game. The goal of the game, like any game, is to beat your opponent. You could try to destroy them, or simply beat them for objectives. You win victory points through doing certain objectives, and at the end of the game the person with the most wins. The rules for these, however, change like the UK's Prime Minister, so it's going to change like in, within the next week. But how do you score objectives and kill your opponent? Well, I'm glad you asked, because it's all down to the different phases of the game. The phases we have are... The command phase, to buff your units. The movement phase, which is pretty self-explanatory. The psychic phase, where you can buff, nerf, and kill units with psychic powers. The shooting phase, once again, self-explanatory. The charge phase, to get into combat with your enemy. And the fight phase, where you beat your opponent to death, not in the literal sense. There's also the morale phase, where units can run away depending on casualties. And that's basically the game. But here's the story. Sit down, Star Wars, because you've literally got nothing on this. Humans created a galactic empire via psychic powers to travel faster than light. Then their AI had an uprising, which caused a galaxy-spanning war. That wasn't the only problem, though, as warp storms had appeared which started to cut off this warp travel. So the entire human race across the galaxy was split up. Until some guy called the Emperor came along, took over Earth, took over Mars, and made a bunch of giant space boys. He then went, damn, I kinda wanna get the humans back together. So he created what is called the Imperium, and 20 Sons, but we'll get to them soon. So there is a whole nother game, and about 40 plus books based around the next part. Trust me, I'm going to skip a lot. So to sum it up, the Emperor's Sons got split across the galaxy by the Chaos Gods. And because of this, they had very varied upbringings before they got reunited with the Emperor. Two sons got completely deleted from existence, and one got split into two. So it is a pretty funky story, and to be honest, most of the Primarchs got trauma from their experiences. These experiences, and generally just not liking the Emperor because he is a dick, caused half of the sons to turn to chaos. Khorne, the god of fighting and blood, who Angron went to. Zinch, the god of change, who Magnus went to. Slanesh, the god of excess, who Fulgrim went to. And Nurgle, the god of disease, who Mortarion went to. And then the other Chaotic Sons were classed as Chaos Undivided or just Renegade. Then I also mentioned that each Sun got a full legion of super soldiers. Yeah, so this was another galaxy spanning war. And it ended with the Emperor sitting on a throne as a corpse. A majority of his Sons either dead, evil or simply missing. And the Imperium in a frankly shit state. And over a few thousand years, the Imperium turned to religious worship of the Emperor, even though it's exactly what he didn't want. It's just trying to hang on to life at this point. It also doesn't help that there are tons of alien races making life more difficult, so let's quickly run through those. Necrons were awakening from a 60 million year nap. Tal are evolving to become incredibly technologically advanced. Eldar, <laughs> well they're just trying to survive too. Orcs just want to have a good fight. And Tyranids are trying to eat everything. To help out the Imperium, the Primarch Rebute Gilliman got revived and is now the leader of the Imperium. He wasn't so pleased with the place though, so he's been trying to implement changes, but gradually to stop an uprising. But uh, with recent lore, everything is looking to become a whole lot worse. Now, I've just skipped through literally decades worth of story building. But if you're interested in more lore stuff, I'll be making future videos about it. Anyway, let's quickly go through each faction's lore and playstyle. Space Marines. The poster boys of Warhammer and the faction with the most rules. Each colour scheme has a story and Primarch linked to them. And they can pretty much do anything on the tabletop. So let's go through each chapter! Ultramarines, the all-rounders under Gilliman, who have the most plot armour. Imperial Fists, the guys who like to fortify stuff. Black Templars, the guys who were Imperial Fists, but are now incredibly more relevant. Blood Angels, the vampires with severe PTSD. Space Wolves, the Vikings who love to drink beer and ride wolves. White Scars, they're quick. Dark Angels, the secret dudes who just got their Primarch back. Raven Guard, the guerrilla warfare experts. Salamanders, they love fire. And Iron Hands, the Forge Masters, who are incredibly irrelevant. There are thousands of chapters, but those are the main ones, according to Games Workshop. I know Crimson Fist fans, look, it's, it's sad, I know. There's also two special Space Marine chapters, those being the Grey Knights and Death Watch. Grey Knights are super specialist Psycho Marines who fight anything chaotic. On the tabletop, they teleport around, blasting psychic powers, shooting with vast weaponry, and just stabbing people. 
Deathwatch are super specialist heavy weapon marines who love to fight Xeno. On the tabletop they aren't too different to normal marines. But they have some special rules to fight Xeno, and technically they have their own special weapons. Other than the Space Marines, the Imperium has Adeptus Custodes, the bodyguards of the Emperor, who are basically demigods. And it reflects on the tabletop with very few models and being extremely tough and deadly. Astra Militarum, the basic humans who fight like the Soviets. I mean, with a horde of a million men, eventually you'll take something out. On the tabletop, they have tons of infantry, heavy weaponry, and vehicles. Literally just to win through volume of fire. Adeptus Mechanicus. The weapon forgers who fight with robots and have heavily augmented themselves. They love machines and they worship them like gods. On the tabletop they use machines and complicated ability upgrades to win. Adeptus Sororitas. The nuns with guns who are incredibly devout to the emperor. They love to use religious symbolism and flamers. On the tabletop they literally bring churches and memorials to the battlefield. And finally, the Imperial Knights. Massive war machines who bring terror and pain to anything in their way. They're also cheap to buy even though they look like they're not. On the tabletop, they literally destroy everything, but have difficulty holding objectives. And that's the Imperial forces done. But they need an enemy, or 10. So let's go through them, starting with Chaos. Chaos Demons. The literal embodiments of the four Chaos Gods manifested as demons. Their only goal is to satisfy their god in the way their god likes. On the tabletop, they're split into four armies, but still in one codex, and they can still sort of work together. They like to fight in their own complicated ways, but it is typically combat related. Chaos Space Marines. Somewhat similar to regular Space Marines, but with their own rules and, of course, looks. These also have their own legions, so let's very quickly go through them. The Black Legion. The poster boys for Chaos, who are working under Abaddon to achieve the downfall of the Imperium. They are literally the all-rounders of Chaos. Iron Warriors. The Siege Masters of Chaos. They just love to bind demons to machines and destroy things. And of course it makes sense that in the game they use a ton of war machines. Night Lords. The Terrorists of Warhammer. They simply instill fear in the planets they take over by doing public war crimes. Word Bearers. The Religious Fanatics. You see, the Emperor rejected being their god, so they decided to make the Chaos Gods their god. And it reflects on the tabletop as they love to play around with demons. The Alpha Legion. The spies who we genuinely don't know the goal of. Are they good? Are they evil? We will likely never know. Emperor's Children. The Legion on here who will certainly be their own army at some point. They follow Slanesh, so they enjoy doing crimes against humanity. And their Primarch will likely be the next Primarch model. Those are the basic Chaos Legions, but Free actually did get their own army. Thousand Sons. The Zinch Worshippers, who are all psychers and dust. And at this point in the lore, they're just doing their own thing, which is typically harassing space wolves. On the tabletop, they spam psychic powers, and Magnus is their demon primarch. Death Guard. The Nurgle worshippers, who are incredibly tough, yet absolutely crammed with plague. They also don't do much in the lore, as Mortarian cannot be asked. On the tabletop, they're versatile, slow, and very hard to kill. And Mortarian is, of course, their demon primarch. World Eaters. The newest Warhammer army. But because of that, they don't have many models. Their whole thing is worshipping corn, which makes them incredibly violent. And they've done a ton of damage to the Imperium recently, which I love, by the way, uh, with Angron being unleashed and buffed. Angron is, of course, their demon Primarch. And that's all the Chaos Legions. They're also Chaos Knights, but they are literally just the same as Imperial Knights, but evil. And finally, onto the Xeno races. Eldar are Space Elves, who used to have a highly pleasurable society until that society spawned a Chaos God. And in that instance, the Nesh killed pretty much the entire population except for a few factions. So here they are! Craftworlds. The Eldar who ran away on their big ships and now live on them. And all they're trying to do is survive right now. On the tabletop, they have a variety of elite units and good weaponry. Harlequins. The performer Eldar who worship pretty much the only Chaos God left. And they are incredibly fast and just powerful. And in the lore, they're typically found protecting the webway. On the tabletop, they have very few models, but their rules are typically very good. Yanari. This is literally three people who want to kill Sunesh. And they make it so that every Eldar army can be used together. Those three were in their own rulebook, but Drakari get their own. And they are the most messed up and sadistic faction in Warhammer. The Drakari keeps Sunesh away from them by just feeding her. And I can't tell you how on YouTube. In game though, they are a fast and tactical force with a ton of special rules. 
Moving on from Eldar, we have Necrons. Ancient space robots who lost their souls to gods and now keep those same gods as pets. In the lore, they believe the galaxy is theirs to conquer. Well, if they could be bothered to do it. You see, they are very frequent in civil wars. On the tabletop, they're primarily shooting based and they're able to heal slash resurrect themselves. Orcs! The only faction that's consistently winning, as all they want is a good scrap. They defy the laws of physics if they believe hard enough, and their society is run on fighting. On the tabletop, it's common to field a horde of troops, with some ramshackle vehicles to help them out. Tau. The new kids on the block, who are advancing their technology incredibly fast. Because of how weak they typically are, they all have suits, which are typically mechs. In the lore, they believe in the greater good, which turned them into communists. And on the tabletop, all they do is shooting, which is incredibly good. Tyranids. Big bugs from outer space. They came from another galaxy simply to consume. They just eat all the biomass on a planet and move on. And because of how many there are, they are probably the biggest threat to the galaxy right now. On the tabletop, they're capable in all aspects of the game, which comes with the ability to create literally any kind of armor you want. Gene Stealer Cults. Cults that are formed by a Tyranid Gene Stealer on human planets. They infect people and force them to produce incredibly loyal hybrids to the Star Gods. Then, through years of planning and guerrilla warfare, they take over a planet and prepare it for a Tyranid swarm. On the tabletop, they're glass cannons, with ambush tactics being their thing. Leagues of Votan. They used to be human, but after moving to the Galactic Core and losing all contact with humanity, they evolved into a society of squats, and they only care about mining and producing for their ancestor cores. On the tabletop, they don't really have much yet, but they certainly will in the future. They're just about being relatively tough while dealing a decent amount of damage. And that's all the armies! <laughs> if you enjoyed, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. There's tons of supplemental things like Inquisitors, and the rules change all the time. But this will stay up to date until 10th edition, which is in, I'd say, about a month or two. But I'll be doing a lot more stuff like this, including videos for specific armies. Check out the socials, and I'll see you in the next video.